Okay, now today uh, we are going to discuss about some more signatures of this corgulan plasma. If you remember last time, in your last lecture, we discussed about the corgulan plasma, what corgulan plasma is and how we can look into this corgulan plasma, what is how we can see the formation of the corgulan plasma. As I told you that there are two possible scenarios to look for this, uh, this the formation of the corgulan plasma. One is at the time of a big bang when the universe came into the existence and the other is we can have to look into the neutron stars, but both the cases are not possible. So in order to study this corgulan plasma, what we do, we actually create a little bang in the laboratory in which we allow the two heavy nuclei to collide with each other to reach the formation of a corgulan plasma. And we have discussed that also with the help of a Jorkin model, how it actually, do. but then I said, this corgulan plasma actually has the problems. It has a very short survival time. The moment it is being formed, it cools down and it condenses into the hadrons. So it has a very short survival time of the order of 10 to the power minus 22 seconds. Right? So how we can then detect the corgulan plasma? Therefore, we cannot see. Therefore, we actually rely on some indirect signals. So indirect signals, there are various signatures or signals by which we can see. Yes, there has been the corgulan plasma was being formed at that time, right? At the time of a collision. So in the last lecture, we talk about one of the signature as the dilepton, dilepton production, dilepton production. So we see that when the corgulan plasma is being produced, we can see the dilepton, lepton pairs, lept L plus L minus. So this was the first signature and we discussed it in detail in the previous class. Now today we are going to talk about some more signatures. Now let me take the one other one. That is what we called as Jepsi suppression. You might have heard about this Jepsi suppression in the very first unit of your course, <clears throat> jahan pe aap particles ke baare mein padte hain. This jab se particle is actually a bound state of charm quark and then charm anti quark. So when the charm quark, you know, charm quark and charm anti quark bound state, bound state of this charm and charm, yani C C bar. So this particle, the bound state of charm anti charm, this is what we call as a Jepsi particle. So I, I will say that this Jepsi particle actually, which is a bound state of charm and then anti charm, uh, charm and anti charm quark. So when a corgulan plasma is being produced or a corgulan plasma is this being formed, the color charge of the quarks, you know that the quarks carry the one of the one contact number as color charge. So the color charge of the quark and the anti quarks um, let me write it here, the color charge of quarks in QGP, color charge of quarks, anti-quarks, and also the gluons are subjected to screening. What I mean by the subjected? Are subjected to some screening. This screening. This screening is very much similar to your Debase screening, Debase shielding aapne suna hoga, where <clears throat> you can say the Debase shielding in electric charges, a plasma mein jab hum baat karte hain, the dip, uh, this damping of the electric field caused by the presence of, that is, that actually caused the damping of the electric field. So this color charge of this quarks, anti-quark and the gluons are actually, actually subjected to screening. So this process is very similar to your Debase screening in electric charge. Debe. This was given by Debe screening, yeah, Debe shielding, just Debe screening in electrical charge, yeah, electrical plasma, yeah, electrical charge. Similar to, okay. So you need to understand uh, that this QG, in the QGP, aapka hota hai, this major color charge of the color is a quantum number of these quarks and the gluons. They are actually subjected to screening. What kind of a screening? That screening to which like, is very similar to that of the DBS screening of the electrical charges. <clears throat> so what will what will happen with that screening or that shielding, DBS shielding? So this may be observed in the association of jab size. So with that, what will happen? The charm, anti charm particle hoga, there will be a dissociation and it will be they will separate this will be separated c and c bar will be separate dissociation of the charge anti-charm pairs 
okay that's why we call this as a jab size suppression jab size suppression means it will get suppressed that's so jab size production of the particle will get suppressed i will show you uh, in a while ke how they will get actually the suppressed so because of this they will screen this charm and anti charm pairs jo aapke hote hain they will just play up apart and they, they, they will not remain bound so this because of the debase screening the short interaction which holds the this charm anti charm pairs get weakened so this is because of this this debase screening the interaction the force which holds this charm and anti charm pairs together it actually gets weakened so what will happen then when it gets weakened this allows the charm and this anti charm pair anti charm quarks to separate theek okay? hai and thereby resulting in the separation of jab obviously when they will separate the the number of the jab side particles will get suppressed and there will be less number of jab side particles so earlier aapka kya hota hai so if this is an uh, if this is uh, we have d up like u d c u d c c d we have up d like we have this is the quarks corgulan plasma hmm? अपने Up, down, down. So this is the case. C or C bar. Is me? What is C C bar when C and C bar when Q G P is produced. Okay. Now what will after? What will happen after that? Now as this uh, C and C bar drift apart. That means they will move from each other. That means C either will go here and C bar will go in this direction. They will move. They will break into this and. the qgp cools you know that the qgp cools down soon these charm and anti charm quarks will condense into the hadrons yani they will just form the hadrons how they will form the hadrons by combining with the lighter quarks we have this up quark down quark and so other quarks they will combine with the lighter quarks because you know that up down and charm charm is considered to be as the heaviest of these quarks so now this will combine with the lighter quarks to form the another this hadrons like they would form the mesons so what could be the particle like like for example they form we call them as a d mesons so like we have a d particle jisme aapka c and d bar d meson hoga then we have another meson d bar isme c bar and d will be there then we have again d s jisme aapka strange hoga so it will be like c s bar isme hoga yani the charm will combine with the strange anti strange quark charm will combine with the anti d quark charm anti charm will combine with the d quark to form these mesons you know the mesons is a combination of a quark and an anti quark so like d s bar so it will be now c bar s right so these <clears throat> there will be so one is the qgp so how it will how we will detect that what is the signal from the qgp so we will see that there will be an increase in the number of d mesons so there will be an increase in the number of these are all d mesons increase in the number of d mesons when the, the increase in the number of d mesons and decrease or or i can say the suppression suppression of what of this jab psi particle right jab psi particle mm -hmm. so once the qgp is being formed we will see that there will be an increase in the number of d mesons and a decrease or a suppression of jab psi particle that's why we called this suppression uh, this um, signature as the jab psi suppression and the jab psi particle will be get suppressed so you know let me just some just tell it in many very simple and also one more thing about this um, jab psi suppression this was actually first su su suggested by this martsui and sats they are the people who actually are studying this corgulan plasma they actually suggested this jab psi sub signature as the first signature these two people martsai and the sats okay so let me now say uh, again repeat it just to be very brief so i said that the jab psi suppression is again a signature the one is the corgulan plasma is very formed you know that there will be the corgulan plasma will contain only quarks right c d up whatever the quarks it will contain only quarks okay now there will be a 
there will be this this the there will be there will be some combination of this c and c bar which we call them as a jepsi particle so one is the this uh, in coagulant plasma there, there will be the quarks but besides that there will be this but there will, in the coagulant plasma in plasma there, there it will be there will be some sort of a shielding jisko hum dewe shielding bolte hain this uh, not debay shielding it is some kind of a shielding which is very similar to your shielding in the electro electric field so with that shielding what will happen the bond the interaction between this charm and the anti charm it will get weakened as a result they will just move apart when they will move apart they will combine with the other lighter quarks so when they will combine with the light they will form a hadrons as i said they will form these demesons so we say that an increase in the number of demesons and a subsequent decrease or separation in the jepsi particle can be suggested as a signature of this coagulant plasma okay so i hope this is okay so let us now move to the next one uh it's called as the third one is uh, the third one is what we called as strainness strainness enhancement and hence meant now you know that the strainness again is a quantum number strainness is a quantum number that is assigned to these quarks those the, like we, if i have a strange particle we assign a strain number 1 to that particular minus 1 to an anti particle and 0 to other particles other than the strange particles okay so now strainness enhancement as the name suggests there will be an enhancement enhancement enhanced strainness so enhanced production of the strange particles in comparison to light quark flavors so there will be enhanced production of the strange quarks s and s bar in comparison to in comparison to like we have s and s bar hmm s and s bar so that can be suggested as a signal of the coagulant plasma in heavy end collisions enhanced production of strange particles strange particles are those particles which will contain the strange quark as an as a constituent in comparison to light quark flavors so u and d okay has been suggested as a signature or signal i can say of qgp formation qgp formation in nucleus nucleus collision nucleus nucleus collision now what is actually happening <clears throat> the basis of such an idea is actually the requirement of a large gluon density when we have the large number of gluons because quark gluon plasma kya hai it contains quarks as well as the gluons quarks gluons so the, the requirement of the large gluon density gluon de large gluon density means the number of gluons per unit volume and the low threshold low energy threshold for the occurrence of a dominant qcd this qcd this quantum chromodynamics process of ss bar production which will make the production and equilibration of the strange very significant okay let me just elaborate what i mean by this point so with within a deconfined phase deconfined phase means when the quarks and the gluons are not confined to to hadronic dimension so within that deconfined phase this ss bar prior production this ss bar prior production is described actually by few processes so what is the first process the firstly what will happen in that a gluon can interact with a uh, a gluon pair can annihilate and a gluon can interact with an another gluon as a result they will produce the s and s bar this is the first process this is what i mean that because of the large gluon density and this low th energy threshold the the, the qcd process of this uh, ss bar ss bar production will take place so what will happen now the gluon a gluon pair can annihilate and they will just combine they will just annihilate annihilate see each other and they will create an sss s bar this is the first now the second case is the strange quark and an anti quark can also be produced in the collision of light quarks like we have 
also they can be produced for like u plus u bar so this will also give us s plus s bar and also d plus d bar so it will give us s plus s bar again okay now these strange quarks and anti quarks so this strange and an anti quark produce and subsequently combine with the neighboring part neighboring quarks or neighboring anti quarks right now when they are when these particles are being produced in strange and anti strange quarks are being produced in a quark gluon plasma they will combine with up down char and whatever the quarks are there in the neighborhood they will combine with those they will combine with those slight quarks and as a result they will form the strange particles so they are obviously when they will combine with the the quarks they will produce a, they will form a strange particles they will form strange particles so that means the number of the strange particles in the quark gluon plasma will increase so that's why we call this signature as an strange enhancement so that's so i can say there will be the enhanced production of strange particles strange particles in the quark gluon plasma and when there is an enhanced production of strange particles in the quark gluon plasma it has been we suggested that this uh, is because there was a quark gluon plasma being produced in the collision okay so how we will analyze this the production this uh, enhanced production this is normally studied by analyzing the ratio of strange to non strange particles produced in the nuclear collision and that means if our 10 this particles non strange particles produced and 20 strange particles the ratio we will just determine the ratio 10 by 20 so the ratio of the strange to the non strange non strange to the strange particles will give us that yes there could be a large that, that, that there are the enhanced production of the strange particles obviously it will depend upon the ratio if the ratio is large we will say that it, there will be a large number of the particles were being produced uh, this strange particles are being produced in the collision in the nucleus nucleus collision so we will say that yes this strange enhancement is another signature of this quark gluon plasma is it okay is it okay yes sir ke kal pe theek ho gaya sama isko bahut aasan hai isme zyada kuch bhi nahi now another signature is the direct photons theek hai now this quark gluon plasma also emit a photon theek hai yani which actually the photons are usually we say that they don't have any charge and they don't have the mass right they are actually photon light of a photon it is very similar but why we call this as a direct photon i will just tell you in a while because how is it different from the other photons okay so i will say that in addition to some other particles that are being produced in the in this quark gluon plasma this quark gluon plasma can also emit the photons so why will it uh, how it will emit the photons it actually result is because of the electromagnetic interaction between the constituents of the plasma because there are the charged particles this up down they are all charged particles so they, when there are charged particles there will be an electromagnetic interaction when there is an electromagnetic interaction so because of that electromagnetic interaction the photons will be emitted from this quark gluon plasma theek hai now these direct photons are actually regarded as the clean probes clean probes or we can say that the clean signatures clean probes for studying for studying this qgp okay why because they are hardly affected by hardly affected by this intervening medium inter intervening medium because they being the neutral and massless they are not affected by the intervening hadronic matter either okay now there are two actually prominent processes by which this quark gluon plasma can emit a photon two different processes the first process is what we called as annihilation process annihilation process so what is happening in annihilation process in annihilation process a quark and and gluon can interact each other to form a photon what is actually happening so i will let me just show you within this an exam this an reaction so i will take a quark it will just combine with a gluon theek okay? hai okay sorry not gluon firstly it will just quark will combine with an anti quark right a quark with a combine with an anti quark and as a result they will form they will form this photon plus also a gluon is being produced okay you can also i don't know whether you have studied this uh, 
Feynman diagrams, Feynman diagrams. So I can show this lecture in this. Uh, in the next very, in the very next unit wave interaction, we are going to use these diagrams frequently. So here we are taking this. This is if this is a quark, and this is an anti-quark. We are taking it in the uh, opposite direction. They will just uh, <coughs> combine. They will just combine to produce a gluon. Gluon, we usually as a represent. Karte hain. This is a gluon, and some. And some photon. This is one process, right? <clears throat> okay. So this this process is actually analogous to another process. Yeah, we can also have the this process can also lead to yeah, a core can also interact with the anti core to produce two photons. Yeah, both the processes are possible. Either this and this process. So this is actually however. So however, the probability for the occurrence of this process is smaller. Occurrence is smaller by a factor of 0.02. So there is a least chance of this process. And if there are happening some uh, thousand, so in thousand there are two, two, only two will be the such interactions. That is what I mean by 0.02, 100%. And out of 100, there will be only the two, right? So this is two percent. So in 100, there will only two will be the such interactions. Okay, so this is the first process, an annihilation process. So the the photons that are being produced because of this from the coagulant plasma, that we can say that there is a signature or a signal to tool or a, this um, a probe or a signal or a signature I can say from the coagulant plasma. Again, so this is the first annihilation process. Then there is another process which is called Compton QCD Compton scattering. <clears throat> the second process is the second one is. QCD quantum chromodynamics Compton scattering. Compton scattering. Now, up, up, you might have heard these annihilation process like pair production. Then you have the photoelectric effect, then you have the Compton scattering. These are the basics modern physics. Make sure you are not going So that's why we call now Compton scattering. You know that Compton scattering is electron comes and it says some. Um, some, a photon comes and hits some electron and it just uh, gets scattered, right? Compton scattering, which is called. Whereas in the photoelectric effect, a photon comes, it, it is being absorbed and an electron is being emitted. Photoelectric effect, right? In pair production, a proton, this electron combines, it just combines with a, this positron to release a photon. Okay. Now, quantum scattering, in this uh, case, in coagulant plasma, in this quantum scattering uh, process, a gluon can interact with a quark. Okay. So, this gluon can interact with a quark to produce a photon plus the quark. Okay. So, if I'm going to represent it with this Feynman diagram, so if this is a quark and I have this, as I said, this is a gluon, so they will produce some uh, sorry this will the gamma i'm just going to say the this is a photon and some quark is being produced because it will conserve this and conserve charge energy barrier number whatever so it will conserve everything or a gluon can also interact with an anti-quark to produce a photon to produce a photon plus some anti-quark right think <clears throat> so you can also represent it by the Feynman diagram like this so a gluon can interact with this anti quark to produce a photon. This is a photon and an anti quark. Right? So, this is another process by which we can, this photon can be produced. So, one is the annihilation process in which the quark can interact with the quark. The another is the charge, the gluon can interact with either quark or an anti quark to produce a photon. Okay. Now, these processes are actually analogous to the scattering of a photon by the charged particle. You know, I was saying that charged particle is an electron. A photon is coming, it is scattered by a charged particle. Okay, we say that we call Compton scattering. That's why we call this process as a Compton scattering. Now, besides these two processes, this annihilation process and the POCD Compton scattering process, there are other means by which we can produce, we can produce a photon. For example, I can have a pi minus, uh, for example, uh, a pi plus meson, pi plus meson can annihilate a pi minus meson, and a pi plus can annihilate a pi minus meson, and it will produce a photon and some another particle which is called rho zero. This is also possible in the coagulant plasma. Or there is another process, a pi plus 
or pi minus pi plus minus can interact with this pi zero and it will produce again a photon plus some rho plus minus this is another process so the, these two processes are also possible there so how we will eliminate how we will say that the, the photons that are being produced uh, are just because of those two processes which we have discovered above because the photons which will come from these photons they will not carry the information about the qgp phase the photons which will come these photons which will come out of this function they will not carry the information about the core the desired information about the coagulan plasma okay so it is always necessary to determine the photon contribution from the different sources yani we see that there are so annihilation sources that is one of the sources so photons are coming out from, from the different sources okay so we need to actually identify which photon actually comes from which process which source okay in order to extract the information in order to extract the information now those photons that are coming because of these two processes annihilation process and the qcd compton scattering those photons are called as direct photons whereas these photons are not called as a direct photons okay is it okay yes sir yes okay. sir okay fine i will send you uh, this uh, note also you can go through that later on but uh, 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 now uh, i am i have 10 minutes and i i have the one uh, final signature of this coagulan plasma uh, this is uh, uh, will be little uh, this will little bother you because it's not as simple as these signatures because but i will just give you some very simple idea about this uh, i will give you some very simple idea about this uh, fluctuations so last is but not the least the five that is what we call as a fluctuations these fluctuations are also considered to be as the probes of the coagulan plasma theek hai now what are actually the fluctuations are so कोई भी फिजिकल क्वांटिटी जो हम मेजर करते हैं लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल जब हम ये कोई प्रोसेस देखते हैं कोलिजन प्रोसेस यहाँ पे आपका कोलिजन प्रोसेस हुआ है अब देर आर लार्ज नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स दैट आर कमिंग आउट ऑफ दिस कोलिजन पॉइंट ठीक है वी आर एक्चुअली स्टेडिंग दिस पार्टिकल बहुत सारे पार्टिकल आपके चारों ओर मतलब प्रोड्यूस होते हैं जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ दीज टू बीम एक यहाँ से आया है एक यहां से एक कोलाइड एंड प्रोड्यूस दीज आर ऑल पार्टिकल्स यूजुअली जब भी हम दिस फ्लक्चुएशन इज नॉट ओनली हियर यू यू कैन स्टडी द फ्लक्चुएशन इन एनी जहां पे भी आप कोई डाटा लेते हैं एक्सपेरिमेंट में लेते हैं यू कैन स्टडी दिस स्टैटिस्टिकल दिस फ्लक्चुएशन सो दिस इज अ जनरल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ एनी फिजिकल क्वांटिटी दैट वी मेजर एक्चुअली एक्सपेरिमेंटली ठीक है नाउ दिस फ्लक्चुएशन विल डिपेंड अपॉन द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द सिस्टम राइट सो इन केस ऑफ वे नाउ सिंस द सिस्टम हमारे पास क्या है वी आर स्टडीइंग द न्यूक्लियस न्यूक्लियस कोलिजन सो दीस फ्लक्चुएशंस एक्चुअली कैरी द एम्पल इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट दिस इंटरवेनिंग मीडियम जो ये मीडियम है जो हमारे पास क्यूजीपी फॉर्म हो रहा है इट विल द वी विल सी द बिहेवियर ऑफ दिस इन दिस मीडियम टू चेक इफ इट एग्जिबिट अ फ्लक्चुएशन वी कैन से वी विल वी विल कम टू सम कंक्लूजन व्हाट व्हाट एक्चुअली द फ्लक्चुएशंस आर ओके now the the fluctuations in this high energy nucleus physics or in the nucleus nucleus collision i will say it has actually become an important tool for exploring this um, the uh, dynamics that is being involved in this process in the nucleus nucleus collision theek hai so now as i said ki this fluctuation is in terms of a multi particle production these are the particles being produced we call them as a multi particle production there are multi number in a collision there are thousands billion thousands of particles being produced in one some collision theek hai so now we actually describe we study this collision in two different um, this uh, uh, are divided into two different this one is called as a statistical fluctuation statistical fluctuation select in multi particle process and other other is called as a non statistical fluctuation non statistical fluctuation aur isko hum dusra naam bhi bolte hain dynamical fluctuation dynamical fluctuation now kya hai ye statistical fluctuation and what are those dynamical fluctuations these statistical fluctuations actually in this nucleus nucleus collision it arises it is it's just a statistical 
this uh, fluctuation because of some statistics that is being involved in the uh, in, in my data it they actually arise due to difference in due to arise due to difference in impact parameters impact parameter impact parameter we have i have shown you what actually the impact parameter is okay impact parameter of the collisions from from the different producer particles from different produce particles okay <clears throat> so this is because of the different in this case otherwise the statistical fluctuation is just simply a fluctuation that are being involved because of some statistical now non statistical fluctuations are those fluctuations which may be arise because of some physics process taking place in the collision so arise because of some because of some physics process taking place or involved in the collision involved in the collision right okay so we are actually the studying the behavior of the particles that are being produced now there are actually different means there were the two people one was the belias and other was the pischansky pischansky they obtained a tool to study these these some um, fluctuations and that is called as the scaled factorial moments scaled factorial scaled factorial moment theek hai bas aap thoda sa isme idea rakhe otherwise it's very broad it's beyond your this it's actually the research purpose process so they these two people actually study the scaled factorial moment so they study the scaled factorial moment of the particles that are being produced in this collision then see the behavior of those scaled factorial moment as a number of the bin size yani they actually distribute the number of particles in different bins unko hum m size bin bolte hain so then i say that then we see if these scaled factorial moments like for example we represent usually them by fq and we just plot them with the help of a bin size ln m so m and fq they are fq are called scaled factorial moments so if they show a power behavior power law behavior power law behavior means in which the one quantity varies as a power of the other so if they say there is a power behavior we say that 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 process is called intermittency or we will say that that is also called a fluctuation yani the party the producer particle will exhibit a exhibit a part this on the exhibit the producer particle will exhibit a fluctuation this is one of the method the another method is known as the mod this the multifractal method multifractal method this multifractal method is again used to study the isko hum represent karte hain gq se this is also used to study this uh, study these fluctuations then there is another one that is what we call as a takagi method takagi method right tau q se hum isko represent karte hain so anyways you just concentrate on one scalar factorial moment so these fluctuations are actually important okay so fluctuations you can just conclude it like the fluctuation in the multiplicity distribution high energy nucleus collision they uh, they are an important signature if the part producer particle will exhibit a fluctuation the fluctuation of kaise study karenge hum it's not like we will just visualize it we will see the behavior of the particles or the behavior of the data that is being produced if they exhibit this like for example this is a tool to check the fluctuation like other for example hamare paas ye intermittency ka mai keh raha if it shows like this behavior we will say yes it will exhibit a fluctuation and non statistical fluctuation rather so in com dynamic fluctuation bolte hain so if we will show, see this behavior then we can see yeah there is a dynamic fluctuation and we can suggest that yes there is there is a signature for the formation of a coagulant plasma theek hai is it okay <coughs> yes sir okay you just concentrate on the first four uh, first four signatures uh, if you are if you find it little uh, you cannot understand but i am sending you the note there uh, more detail is written on that note you can go through them later but at least i have some idea that these fluctuations yes they are also as considered to be as a signature of the coagulant plasma and i suggest to you and i Marco, send you once the the introduction to heavy and collision by wang sm wang उसमें ये पूरा डिटेल में यू कैन गो थ्रू दिस बुक एस एम वॉन्ग ठीक है एस एम वॉन्ग यू जस्ट गो थ्रू दैट बुक एंड विद दैट वी आर डन विद दिस कॉर्गुलन प्लाज्मा पार्ट इफ यू हैव एनीथिंग एनी क्वेश्चन यू कैन आस्क
if you do have anything to ask about this today's lecture you can ask <clears throat> mm -hmm. sunny Thank you.